dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today's topic is uprooting the passions in children. The ideas are coming from Elder Porphyrius, as well as John Cronstad and Presbyteria Juliana County, and her article, Young Children in the Orthodox Church, as well as other Holy Fathers. Christ says, Suffer little children to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of God. Orthodox Christian parents want to bring our children to Christ. We bring them to be baptized. They are present with us at the divine services, and they must also be present with us during services whenever they are being offered during the week. If we do this, our lives will be blessed, and we will have blessed children. When children are not really living the faith, although on Sundays their bodies may be in the church, their minds and spirits will be far away. So we have to be coming to church with our children during the week to cultivate their Christian formation. This way, the children will learn when they come into the presence of the Lord about where they are and who our Lord is. This way, the children will, like their parents, begin to want to be in the church and they will stop being restless. Like everything, it takes hard work and effort. We must stop ignoring children's bad behaviors, hoping they are merely symptomatic of youthful ignorance and that time will take care of the problem. It is a terrible thing, but these children, if they do not learn how to want to be in church now, they will choose not to be in church when they are older, when the choice is theirs to make. So we have to work hard now or else our children will suffer the same fate of so many other Orthodox who have decided they don't like being in church and so they stop coming. The parents will be answerable to God for their departure. If we start to come to the church, then we will want to be in the church, and the same will be true for our children. Father Peter says that if we do not like to be in church, then we are not going to like being in heaven. We need to reprioritize our goals for our children. The goal should be the child's salvation. Not that the child gets into the best school and drives the fastest car and has the highest paying job. We must stop listening to worldly wisdom and listen instead to eternal wisdom. The world tells us to indulge our children and make sure that they are never uncomfortable or unhappy. On the contrary, our Holy Fathers teach us that it is the parent's duty to uproot the passions in children. St. John of Kronstadt says, Do not neglect to uproot from the hearts of children the tares of sin, impure, evil, and blasphemous thoughts, sinful habits, inclinations, and passions. The enemy and the sinful flesh do not spare even children. The seeds of all sins are to be found in children too. Show them the danger of sin on the path of life. Do not hide sins from them, lest through ignorance and want of comprehension they should be confirmed in sinful habits and attachments, which grow stronger and stronger, and bring forth corresponding fruits when the children grow up. But correcting bad behaviors and offering discipline is one of the most difficult things about parenting to get right, especially when we ourselves are struggling with our own passions, like anger, lack of compassion, and little patience. So we must work with our spiritual father to uproot our own passions very hard if we want to make progress with our children. We must be continually asking for help from the Theotokos and the saints. Elder Porphyrius offers these suggestions as well. The medicine and great secret for children's progress is humility. The children who come from humble parents 
do not get angry when their error is pointed out, but rather they try to correct it and pray that God may help them not to become egoists. Children should learn to seek God's help in everything. We have to throw all of the wisdom of the world into the garbage. The world has taught us to have no confidence in our ability to teach and discipline our own children, that we need teams of child psychologists to approve our every action, and we fear losing the love of our children every time a conflict arises. This, of course, is incorrect. Our children are our responsibility, and we must instruct our children from the day they are born in Orthodox Christian life by our example, in our every thought, word, and deed. The key is consistency. Elder Porphyrius taught that our religion wants children to learn the truth from an early age. He stated, you must tell the truth for a person to learn it. Otherwise, you sustain him in ignorance. So to a child, you must tell the truth and scold it so that it knows what it is doing is not good. We must be patient and consistent and have a lot of love. We must not become discouraged when initial attempts at disciplining children appear to fail. When we view our child-rearing methods, we discover we have allowed the child to develop a powerful self-will. We have come to expect disobedience rather than obedience. Indeed, we have often conformed ourselves to the child's will, striving to mold ourselves to the child's every whim and desire, desperate to win and hold the child's love and approval. Self-will, once it is firmly established, is antithetical to orthodoxy, rendering spiritual growth impossible. It is the responsibility of the parents to impose their will upon the child, even in the smallest details, because obedience leads to humility. The will of the parents should be imprinted upon each step, of course, in a general way. Without this, the behavior of the child can easily become corrupted. After enjoying himself according to his own will, the child always returns unwilling to obey even the smallest things. And this, as if it happens, only once. What then can one say if this part of bodily activity is completely neglected? How difficult is it later to uproot self-will, which so quickly seats itself in the body as a fortress? The neck will not bend, the hands and feet will not move, and the eyes will not even wish to look as they are told. But, on the contrary, a child comes out ready to obey any kind of order when from the very beginning he is not given total freedom in his movements. In addition, there is no better training in being the master of one's body than by forcing it to exert itself according to orders. This is the wisdom of St. Theophan, the recluse. Take, for example, a toddler who becomes obstinate about food. The child is given a healthy breakfast, but he refuses to eat because he would rather play at that moment. He screams and cries and thrusts the food away from him. That is okay. Let him get down. A parent cannot and should not force a child to eat. However, the child should not be offered any food until a specific time determined by the parent, preferably the next meal time. Elder Porphyrius says that we are to remind children often of holy baptism, and that at that time they promise God to live decently and steadfastly, to serve Him with faith and righteousness, and to keep away from every evil and sin. And so the child must learn from a very early childhood that he will eat food given by the parent or permitted by a parent at the time decided by the parent. He will play when and where the parent decides. A child must learn from infancy to look to his parents for guidance and not to his own will. We must be careful here to note that overcoming self-will is not easy at all. 
we must expect to struggle and sometimes have unpleasant confrontations with our children. This can certainly be exhausting, but if parents give in to their children's demands, even once, spiritual ground is lost that is very difficult to regain. A child who cries in order to get his way, for example, will cry for everything once he finds that this method moves the parents to sympathy. This so-called sensitive child is merely a manipulator of the feelings of others. To cater to this kind of manipulation as though it were a touching character trait is to develop the child into a self-involved crybaby who will be unable to cope with anything he chooses to avoid. Elder Porphyrius says to set before the child the last things, death, Christ's judgment, eternal life, and the eternal torment, that the fear of God may so abide in them and preserve them from every evil. Pour these other things, pour these and other things, like milk into their young hearts, that they may mature in piety. True orthodoxy must be lived throughout the day and permeate every aspect of our lives. When we bring our children to Christ, we must not forget that we are bringing them into the presence of the King of Kings. When we teach our children to pray, we are teaching them to love God. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Our job as parents is to teach our children how to ask. Children are innocent, and our Lord grants their prayers. When children learn this, they will love our Lord and want to please him. Children want the house of God to be a place of awe and mystery. Though young, children may have difficult being attentive during long services or understanding what these services mean. They yearn to be taught and naturally seek to understand anything for which their parents show a deep reverence. Traditional orthodoxy is a priceless pearl, a gift which we bestow upon our children. Elder Perforius says, Teach the children the law of God, and tell them what the law demands of us, that is, that we should love God and every man, and truly repent, and correct ourselves for the day of judgment. The Orthodox family gets up in time to say their morning prayers together. If this means missing some sleep, it is not only a good spiritual discipline for the adults in the family, but a tremendous example to the children. Before eating or drinking anything, each member of the family should have antidorin and holy water. Prayers before and after meals are important, as is waking up early enough to both finish the morning prayers and sit down together to eat. As with any other meal, complaints about the food must not be tolerated. The mother should not have to become a short order chef catering to each child's tastes. Elder Perforius says, Repeat to the children that we live not for this temporal life, for honor, glory, and riches in this world. If the children are still being shipped off to public school, please take some time to consider that what the child is actually being shipped off to is a war front. A battle the child is not ready for and should not be expected to fight at such a young age. The child will be assailed from every side there, from peers, from teachers, from the curriculum itself, which is designed to engender hatred toward God and family life. Understand that if you truly want to uproot the passions in your children, if you take your duty as a parent to bring your child to Christ seriously, there is no one more important decision you can make than placing your child in an orthodox school, if you are one of the blessed few to have that option. And in the absence of this option, 
Homeschooling is often the only viable alternative. The subject of the children's education is of the utmost importance to the question of whether or not they will keep the faith. According to Father Peter Hears, it will likely be the determining factor. No matter what virtue it is we have determined to work on in our children, all of our efforts will be completely undone if we fail to keep them out of state institutions. Another thing we should keep our way from our children is the television. Father Peter and other prominent Orthodox guides on this topic agree that the television should be thrown out. No good for the children can come of it. Elder Perforius says the parent must work to enlighten the child's inward eyes as to who Christ is and to our own sinfulness. There should be constant verbal communication between the mother and children. The orthodox child is forming a consciousness and it is critical that this conscience be formed correctly. He must not be shielded from the fact that he is a fallen creature capable of sin and in need of repentance. This self-knowledge must be cultivated. The mother must be strong and look at her child in the light of what is best for his eternal soul. Elder Proforius says, let them understand who is the God of Christians and what he requires of us, that he hates evil and loves good, and to do what is pleasing to him. And it is pleasing that the child obeys every word of the parents, and so the mother must insist that every command she gives to the child, even the seemingly least significant, is obeyed. If obedience is forthcoming, is not forthcoming, there should be immediate consequences. Children should be taught to respect other people's property. This may mean that the mother will find herself endlessly repeating, is that yours? No, that is not yours, don't touch it. This will not only help instill a certain humility in the child, I am not the center of the universe, everything does not belong to me, but it renders the child far more trustworthy in situations where he is not under constant supervision. Teach the child to ask permission. If you have visited an Orthodox monastery, you have seen how the monks ask for a blessing of the abbot before they do anything, begin their work, go out on an errand, take a drink of water. This not only helps the monks spiritually in accepting authority and acting in obedience, it helps the abbot maintain good order in the monastery. If a monk were to take food without asking, how would the abbot know whether the brothers had enough food for the evening meal? The same is true in the orthodox household. If a child must ask permission before eating, then the mother knows how much food he has eaten and whether or not he might make himself sick by having more. If the child must ask permission before he goes out to play, the mother knows where he is and will not spend time frantically searching for him. Permissiveness is not kindness. A young child who has bonded to his mother from infancy desires to please her. His willfulness and rebellion do not make him happy. What frost is for flowers, so is the transgression of the parent's will for a child. He cannot look you in the eyes, he does not desire to enjoy kindness. He wishes to run away and be alone, but at the same time his soul becomes crude and the child begins to grow wild. It is a good thing to dispose him ahead of time to repentance, so that without fear and with trust and with tears, he might come and say, I did something wrong. In the Orthodox home, in the evening, the family is reunited. The evening meal should be taken together. If you're not doing this, it's okay, just start now. The TV has been thrown out. The children do not have personal electronic devices to run away with, and so there is time. It is important for the family to come together in joyful fellowship at the end of the day. 
Once you have eliminated snacks taken in front of the television, grazing from the refrigerator, the children will now begin to welcome mealtime and the meaningful conversation and the bonding with parents that comes with it around the dining table. The day has been busy. Now everyone can relax and enjoy each other's company. It is such a blessing the children will learn to make congenial conversation and share important events of their day with you. This is the opportunity for everyone at the table to take to talk about the things that interest them with the people they love most. Everyone must be polite, of course, and there must not be any rudeness. Instead of our freedom consists here in our ability to express our love and interest and in those with whom our lives are entwined. At whatever time is most suitable, the family needs to read from and enjoy the lives of the saints. Before bed, the family will recite the evening prayers together, most probably including the beautiful Akathist to the Theotokos. And in exchange, the Theotokos will shower her blessings upon the whole family. This will be done by the prayer corner where icons of God, the Theotokos, and saints that are dear to the family are kept and where an oil candle is always kept burning. Again, in return, the Theotokos will envelope the family in her protective embrace. Before bed, the incensing of the house will be carried out in a respectful way, and this, of course, will be repeated in the morning. What good fortune, therefore, it is to receive a good, truly Christian upbringing to enter with it into the years of youth, and then in the same spirit to enter into the years of adulthood. Elder Perforius has a beautiful prayer for parents. Lord Jesus Christ, give your light to my children. I entrust them to you. You gave them to me, but I am weak and unable to guide them. So please illuminate them. Through the prayers of John Kronstadt and Elder Proforius, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us.